Aiden is milling up more of the cedar for a couple of projects. Steve needs some for bulkheads in the galley, while Aiden will use the stock to build up some boxes to hold Arabella's lithium house batteries. But first he had to sort out where to fit them, along with the power inverter and the fridge compressor that also have to live in the area around and under the pilot berth. Thanks to all that are supporting the final push and the boat shop as Arabella quickly approaches the launch date of June 17th. If you'd like to help too, check out the Patreon link in the video description below, or go to our website at acorntoarabella.com. Which one's your longest one? Really, this guy. With more than enough white oak and cedar to do all the remaining projects like these a few times over, what was in short supply were hardwoods like maple and cherry. Steve was particularly on the lookout for stock for the cockpit combings that will help finish off the cockpit area. Fortunately, a couple of longtime viewers heard the call and loaded their truck and headed out to Granby from Pennsylvania. You made it. We did. <laughs> How are you doing, Steve? Good. Nice Pat to meet Shaw. you. Nice to meet you. Welcome. Well, what would you bring? Nothing, man. We just came to visit. <laughs> <laughs> Holy smokes. Holy crap. This actually came from blowdown at my mom's place. Oh, no way. That, you know, just came up on, went up on a mountain one time and it was like, you know, two or three acres or more of it. Yeah. Just everything just down. Everything was in the yeah. same direction. Yep. It was, I think it was six, 2016. It was yeah. This March of 16. You guys had like big, a microburst come yeah, in or something and just flattened them all. And just blew a mm -hmm. bunch of trees down and it was, everything was wet. Never seen a, never seen a kiln. Oh, there's no no wood on the boat has. Ah, oh, beautiful. Yeah, you got the cockpit combings in here for sure. These are gorgeous. In return, Steve took them over to the oak pile to see if there was anything quarter sawn that would work for a project back home. But you know what I need is I'm, I'm making chops for a, uh, a high vise. You know, it's a bench crafted high vise I got the hardware for for Christmas. Okay. And I need wood for, for some chops. So a couple pieces of white oak. That one's more quarter. Yep. Yeah, Thank you guys. It's great to meet you. Yeah. yeah. yeah.
That's a lot of charity. That's a lot of charity. <laughs> Trees are amazing. What did this tree make for you? So it had a branch. Branch died, broke off, rotted, and the tree completely healed over it. So this was just a huge burl looking thing on the side of the tree. Mm -hmm. And from the outside, all perfectly hardwood, rotten in the core. What's the plan for that? Not 100% sure. But, I mean, look at this grain. We gotta figure out something cool to do with it. Yeah. I mean, it's the wave. Full circles. It's unreal. Yeah. So I was just trying to cut out most of the rot and instability and kind of see what we gotta work with here. What type of tree is this? This is white oak. Yeah. It's, uh, it's tough stuff. Mm -hmm. Both alive and dead. So I'm building these boxes here, which are gonna house our lithium batteries. And I've been milling up cedar, making boards, and I realized a little bit into my milling process that I can build three boxes. I can combine them along here. So what that means is I got to get the board stretcher out. So. Let's go do that. So this is all my cedar milled and I have started making my half lap, but I thought I'd tie in onto my mistake here. So we're taking these, these are my longest boards. They're about 38 inches. Um, and I'm gonna be combining them with some shorter ones to make about, I need boards that are 44 inches long. So, this is the board stretching process. Now I could be using a dado blade and that would save a lot of time, but have you ever had to change a dado blade? It takes forever. So now I had to clean up these half laps and I found that the fastest way to do that, it's not the joy of hand tools, but the Festool Rotex with some 40 grit on there just rips through these super quick. So let's get to it. Perfect. You know, I never thought I would want Festools or need them, but that sander is unreal. Hard to go back to a regular orbital sander after using one of those.
Is that cherry? This is oak. That's oak. Yeah, this is for the bath patch. Yeah, we made it out of oak because he's gonna have like ropes and chains and stuff like that keep coming in and out of this hatchway. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's gonna be a little bit harder. Although yeah. I am making the surround for it. It's gonna go over it out of cherry. Yeah. So. That just looks so good. Yeah, that came out nice. That's the piece that goes inside. Okay, so this is the final step in our board stretching process. We'll be using some of the Total Boat Thixo, this stuff, Thixo Fast Gear Epoxy, and putting that on here, spread it thin, clamp everything down. I have an extra crib put on top of this, and should be pretty much done after that. We'll wait a day, let it harden overnight, and we should be good. Okay, so I think that this piece of cedar was hit with a shotgun. Or it's just worms. Let me know in the comments. I just filled them with epoxy as we're doing this glue up. But my money's on shotgun. It is the next day and our boards are stretched. And I'm gonna get this battery box together. We have a pretty full boathouse right now. We got some volunteers helping us out. We just took down some staging. We also have some visitors. All right, so right now we got Hal polishing up some bronze. Just do your thing. I'm doing my thing. <laughs>
And over here we got Sophie and Aaron helping us take down some staging. And we also have Cindy doing some detail work. Removing the uh, epoxy from the corners. This stuff here. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. That's what we're looking for. All right. Actually, Hal this morning was polishing up Victoria's bell. It's pretty spectacular. Busy day here. Lots of visitors, lots of volunteers. down on the person below them. Yes. <laughs> well, my name is Cindy, and I um, have been working with the Acorn to Arabella crew for mm, a couple of months, since like last October, I think. Um, I found out about you guys from Jamestown Distributors email because I'm a sailor and so like I'm on their list and uh, and I you started. put out a call for help in the fall with the um, serving and parceling so people may have seen me in those videos I'm the one that's doing this in the, <laughs> in the video my cycling started when I was a little kid, like it does for all of us. When, you know, well, not all of us, I suppose, a lot of us. I learned to ride when I was six or seven. Um, I didn't have a car until after I graduated from college. It was my mode of transportation for many years. Um, and then after college, as a young adult, I sort of 
found that you could ride your bike for charity and start using it for things bigger than yourself. And so I started riding with um, the MS Society and did the MS 150. I used to live in New Jersey. It's where I was born and raised. And so I did the city to shore tour from Philadelphia down to the beach and back over two days time when I was in my mid 20s. And I continue to ride my bike for charity now. I am flying to San Diego and I am going to ride that bike from San Diego to Florida, 3,000 some miles. Uh, and I am doing it to raise money for Dana-Farber Cancer Institute in Boston um, as part of the Pan Mass Challenge, which I have been doing for 10 years. I mean, I'm still going to do Pan Mass Challenge come August. But this riding across the country is to help me raise money for cancer research. And I'm hoping that it'll inspire people to get really generous because I'm really stretching myself to do this huge thing. And um, I'm hoping that I can inspire people to, to donate. 100% of what PMC raises goes to Dana-Farber. And 88% of that money is used to fund research. The amount of new drugs that they discover, the patients that they help, way beyond Boston. It's not just, you know, those of us who live here. They share this with the entire cancer care community. I've lost too many people to cancer in my life. We all have experience with it. Steve's mom now. It's something that I can do. People can help by clicking on the link and making a donation to my ride, which will 100% go to Dana-Farber. One other way people can help is to get my story out there as I'm traveling on the road. And if there are people in the Acorn to Arabella community out there watching who know people in the media, like have connections to local media in any of the towns sort of along my route, and I'm traveling the Southern Tier route, Adventure Cycling Association Southern Tier route, so I'm kind of San Diego through Phoenix and Austin and New Orleans and on out to, Cal or to Florida. Um, anybody who has contacts, um, they could help me uh, by forwarding that information to you guys and like we could stay connected as I'm doing my trip and just helping me get the story out there because the more my story is able to get out there, the more people I can reach and hopefully generate more you know, donations to, to Dana-Farber, which is why I'm doing it. When I learned that Steve's mom, Allison, was diagnosed with cancer, it, it resonated. I lost my dad two years ago. And uh, I started thinking about it. I'm already riding the Pan Mass Challenge. I'm already doing this bike tour. Those things were well in the works. But I thought um, I wanted to dedicate the ride to Steve's mom, but I wanted to see how he felt about that first. I didn't want to just make a presumption. And so when I was out volunteering one day, and it was just the two of us, it was after KP got sick and you were in Maine, and it was just the two of us, and we were chatting over lunch, and, and I asked him how he felt about it. And I said, there's this thing I do with the Pan Mass Challenge to raise money for Dana-Farber, and I'd like to dedicate my ride this year to your mom. And he, he, was, he was touched, and, he, and he, he thanked me. And I said, OK, <laughs> let's do it. And, and so that's when I started sitting with that and thinking about it and said, hey, there's this community of people that follow you guys out there. Maybe we can reach out to them and see if they want to help join in on this um, for, for Steve's mom.